Good evening. Today is February 15th, 2018, and this is your daily episode vlog number 37. Uh, today, I want to talk about BitGirl's hack at the 17 million coins. Now, I know I discussed it previously, but I wanted to go over it once more because I really wanted to dig in and find out what the hell happened to my coins. Well, not my coins personally, but my price. So, just for transparency's sake, I am an investor of XRB. I have uh, 150 tokens. And my price of those tokens are now $9. Now, do I hold on to it or do I sell it? Well, from now, I don't think it could get any worse. So this is the worst possible situation we could have ever been in on XRB. I, I possibly can't see it going any worse. The only thing I can see it making it going worse is if um, Bitcoin crashed again. So then, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, we hold the same amount in BTC. Uh, the coin worth but Bitcoin crashes so the USD valuation goes lower but I, I I don't see it going any lower so I think it's a good time to buy if anything I mean this is I think the lowest it could possibly go however I wanted to jump into what's going on about this situation with Nano so oh, first I want to go over is this gentleman here and this was a really good article uh, or a post uh, from the creator of Nanix and let's just be clear what he says there is no double spend going on okay there's no double spending there's no issues with the protocol or no or the nano node but what he's saying is improper use with improper use and however you implement it now i, I don't fully understand what he's saying here and i i try to get an idea of how that this could actually happen but basically what he's saying is hey if you set it up in, in by option one, there is a possibility, right? Sending up transactions more than once, okay? Because there's like some fail-safe method, like intermittent failure could possibly send out more transactions, uh, more transactions more than once, right? So that's what he's saying. He also mentions option two. Hey, this is the safer choice. This locks everything down. Uh, we could confirm the transactions. Um, everything's confirmed, confirmed, and then that's being sent that way. And this is now considered best practice, right? And it doesn't even take that much power to do it. He's talking about uh, a GPU could do 300 transactions a minute or five seconds. You know, it's uh, it doesn't take much to do this option two method. It's a little bit more um, more resources, but it's not not that bad. So that's what this was talking about. So if BitGrill did option one, so so did Bit, uh, KuCoin, they could potentially have this problem. Now, was the hack associated with it, or did somehow we get double withdrawals because of this uh, way that people have set up on the exchange? Yeah, maybe, possibly. Uh, we don't know that for sure. We'll just have to wait until the investigations are over. But we don't know for sure, but definitely this was an issue. It seems like this was an issue. Okay. Um, KuCoin was using that, but then they switched over to BitGrill. Or excuse me, KuCoin was using option one, but they switched over to option two. And now it's considered best practice by the core development team. So this is where I'm going to throw this question out. If this is now best practice by the core development team, why did BitGrill use option one to begin with? Or did this best practice come to fruition after all this crap that's happened in the last couple months? You know, maybe they sort of figured out, hey, this might be a potential issue. And why didn't it come from the core development team? Why did it come from this guy? Uh, why did it come from the Nanex owner? Now, I know, uh, just reading the article, Nanex owner, this um, Nanex owner talks uh, very much with the Nano development team. So they could have came out with this together. I, I don't know this situation. But one thing that I want to state is if... BitGrow was using best practices based upon what Nano was providing or only thing that were providing. Couldn't you say XRB is at fault here too? If this is somehow they lost all their funds based upon this kind of issue. Yeah, I, I think that's a possibility. Now, let, let's go to another aspect of this. All right. And uh, the other aspect is they were talking about how the website was faulty. Okay, and there was there's a few articles about that. Let me see if I can find one here. Yeah, there it is. There was a bug on BitGrow where you placed two orders and you got the double balance added to your account. You could then withdraw while the orders were up and steal the coins. You had negative balance in it, and balance in it, but you could just make a new account. Like, wow, that's ridiculous. 
you're printing money. You're going in and printing money. You know, uh, that's a big deal, right? I mean, who wouldn't be printing money? If I had that capability, I hate to say it, guys, but I would have been just printing that money. I'll be, I'll be up all night. I'll be like, you know, drinking energy drinks and I'll be printing that cash all day. I mean, I'm going to be honest, guys. If some website's out there and they, they have a flaw out there and I can print money out from their website, I know. I'm not a good person. What can I say? I'll print that money out. Um, I'm sorry, guys. I, I, I think I'm a good person, but if so, if there's a website out there that's you know, going to give me free money, I'm not going to say no to that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm terrible. Um, the other aspect I want to talk about is KuCoin. Now, KuCoin and Binance also mentioned that something about they'll freeze the Hack Nano deposits. If that's the case, then if we have identified the hackers' uh, the, uh, addresses, then could that be potentially be this problem here? Uh, that Nanex has uh, stated that, hey, there's a double withdrawal that could be a potential issue. I don't know how the hacker tried to do this. I looked into DAG. I looked into, I looked everywhere to see how the hacker potentially tried to do this. And I couldn't really find out any information. This was the best article I could find. There was another article saying that, um, no, actually a pretty well-written article about how XRP is not secure. And this is an article posted on January 1st, but um, he mentions double spending. However, double spending is not an issue with XRB right now, uh, based upon what Nanex is saying. It's misuse of the protocol, okay, or mis uh, how you set things up is the problem. So whose fault is it? Well, we know for one aspect is BitGrow. Um, BitGrow definitely has their own problems. I mean, look at this. Like they're like, hey, my account got you know more funds than it should have. You know, some people also say, hey, where I lost my funds, where, where did it go? So we know BitGrow is partially at fault. They have code issues on their website, and then we have the other aspect of the withdrawals or possible double um, possible double withdrawals off the wallet based upon kind of some kind of flaw they might have. So I could have received on my wallet, literally, maybe two times or three times the value when I did a withdrawal on BitGrow, who knows? So if that's the case, I would say XRB's at fault, the Nano team, because they should have educated BitGrow. They should have educated BitGrow on how to do their, uh, how to do proper withdrawals using their protocols, right? On the other side, if BitGirl's website's a problem too. So we have two issues. We don't know what happened and how the funds actually got withdrew. Um, we, I could scour the internet for hours. I don't know if you have that information, but um, there, there are two problems. And I feel like at this time specifically, I think BitGirl is the victim here. Okay. Um, I, th I mean, well, obviously they are the victim. They got hacked 14 million or 17 million, but you know, people are like saying that they're just incompetent and saying a whole bunch of random stuff. But in essence, they, they might have been just following proper procedure that Nano provided them to set up their exchange. If that's the case, then it's Nano's fault, right? It's their, it's their coin, their protocol. You know, and they must do it. and. There, there's talk about a hard fork, but uh, with DAG architecture, um, I don't think that's possible. That's what I've been reading so far. Uh, it could happen with um, blockchain, but not with DAG. Um, so that's a different whole story. But hey, uh, l let me know what you guys think about uh, the whole situation. and Just give me a comment on it. Uh, I like to read about whose fault it is. All right. Thanks, guys.